This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. I'm here with Brandon and Erica. I'm Jeff, and we've got a very special show for you guys today with a look back at some of our best moments, including our special celebrity guest hosts. Now, these people were originally on our daytime show, but we wanted to share them with you. And I'll never forget this moment when the amazing actress Cheryl Lee Ralph delivered probably the best argument of the show. Let's take a look. Giving birth is no walk in the park, but wait till you see what doctors are giving to women to make it easier. Virtual reality headsets. Now that's so sad. Why? Oh, it's so Cheryl. sad. I tell you, there was only one thing I screamed for to make it better, and I was like, get me drugs! <laughs> okay, my first one was unmedicated, so it was hell. So now this time around, I'm going to take it all. Yeah, give no. me the drip. No, no. Give me the headset. No. Give me it all to me. No, because trust me, part of that is going to come out in your child. Ooh. So you what think you, I should be unmedicated again? You should do whatever's going to make you feel most comfortable without all that extemporaneous stuff, girl. No. You think about it. Think about everything you're going through. So the moment they piss you off at 16, you say to them, you know what I went through for you. <laughs> That's yeah, what you do. That's yeah. true. Oh, yeah, do it. I will. Oh, man. That was the most but convincing Cheryl, argument I've ever heard on this show. This is real. That made me want to have a baby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. She was amazing. <laughs> she was absolutely amazing. Miss Cheryl is legendary icon status. It was so amazing to have her in the room. She brings so much great energy. And when you get an icon like that, you kind of expect them a little bit to be some sort of way. We like had a deep conversation between commercial breaks. She, uh, I was blown away. She was family. And I, I get what she's saying about uh, when you're 16, you tell them what they went through because my mom still reminds me that I gave her stretch marks. <laughs> <laughs> She should remind you. Way to go, sister girl. Now, Melissa Rivers was one of my favorite guests, and you've got to hear what she had to say about Felicity Huffman, who was released from prison 11 days into her 14-day sentence her, for her part in the college admission scandal. Watch. After serving time in prison, Felicity Huffman has a new mission to help female inmates. Sources said uh, it was hard for Felicity to leave the women she became close or became close to while behind bars, and she felt like they were forgotten about. How close can you become with anyone in 11 days? <laughs> if you're with them all the time. How close can you become with anyone in 11 days, even if you're with them all the time? Props to her. I think of everyone who's been involved, and I've done a lot. I did a podcast about the admissions scandal. She is the only person, in my opinion, that handled it appropriately and well, and she took her lumps, went to jail, made her statements. She handled it beautifully, admitted her mistake. Unlike Lori Loughlin. Mm. Unlike a lot of them that <laughs> yeah. we don't know about. Right. right. I still say... You can spend eleven. You can spend eleven days on a vacation with somebody twenty four seven, and still really not know them that well. Do you think this is a PR stunt? No, I think it's um, finding a cause that maybe touched her. I want to see how long it sustains. Again, eleven days. <laughs> eleven days being locked up in a cushy place is a spa. That's a cleanse to me. The biggest point to me is she is a public figure who came out said she was wrong, yeah. admitted it, didn't fight back, and took her lumps. And we need more public figures to do that rather than run to the spin. Completely do you think, agree real quick, with do you, you think Lori Loughlin's gonna serve time or not? <laughs> I, again, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of the case. I think she will. I think her behavior in this has not been stellar. And I don't like necessarily whether she's innocent or not. I have no idea. But I do think when you're caught, up, caught in something like that, regardless, you come out and apologize to your children. Yeah. Because it comes down, you know, my poor son is just humiliated by the fact that he's my child and my mother's <laughs> grandchild. So I feel like I constantly have to apologize. <laughs> so maybe that's why I'm so, like, you know, mm -hmm. close to this. I know. And she opened up there because she knows a lot of people personally that are involved yeah. in the scandal, not just the ones that we talk about. Yeah, we got some good tea from Melissa. Yeah. And I didn't know what to, I mean, you think, what is it like growing up as Joan Rivers' daughter, yeah. you know? And she's just like, just a normal person right. with a big personality, and it's cool. I think you can get to know someone 11 days in the clink. 
<laughs> as you say, Erica. Eleven days in the clink. That's that's family time, right? You there. don't want to find family out. Family time. No, absolutely. You don't want to do not want to. Uh, it was great having her on, and you know what? We had the pleasure of having Real Housewives of Dallas star Leanne Locken join us right here, and she dissed on her favorite and least favorite housewives. Check it out. Who puts on the biggest show for the cameras? If you had to call someone else. Lord Jesus. Uh, Could it be any franchise? Let's, let's any franchise. Okay, any franchise. Okay, franchise. Okay, let's Thank you. That. And who's your favorite, too? Who okay. puts on the biggest um, show? And who's your favorite, favorite? And who's your least favorite? <laughs> Come on, give us the team, Dang, girl. Like, yep. Seriously. Mm -hmm. No, no. Barrage me with a few more. You got a little more AK-47 questions coming out? <laughs> I can tell you, I think that there are some incredibly, there's some women who are incredibly good at it. I think Sonia yes. and Ramona are, yes. and Dorinda are like, New York. Are like, I would dream of the day that I have that kind of a, a you know, Three Stooges on my show and mm -hmm. I could be a part of it because mm -hmm. I think that's fun. I mean, like, look, Luann in the bushes was everything. I have a lot of favorites because I feel like I learn and I get a lot of support from a lot of friends. So like Erica on Beverly Hills, I'm just, I, I will be a diehard. I'm a ride or die Erica fan. Oh, we're a big Erica yeah. team yeah. fans over she's here. A yeah. real, she's a real human. I don't know that I have a least favorite. I know I have a lot that I would not want to get in a physical altercation with. Who? Well, uh, <laughs> listen, honey, I got weave. I'm not getting near Portia. <laughs> uh, now, listen, I do want to work out with Portia because I think she could teach me a thing or two. But, yeah, but I like to keep my weave right okay. attached. All Fair. right. If anybody's going to pull it out, it should be me. Okay. Now you're a fan of the Housewives franchise, right? I am a huge fan of the Housewives uh, franchise. Now, I had to be honest, and I said it to Leanne, too. I didn't know a ton about Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, Dallas isn't on my top, but I did watch her wedding, and I watched a couple episodes. Um, you know, it's like... Season one is always getting to know you. Season two is when you get the Real Housewives lighting. And I think they're on to like season three or four, so I might catch up. Good for them, though. Good. And her yeah. husband was an amazing guy. He was. I love that guy. He was awesome. Well, celebrity host Mark Summers was here, and you've got to hear the story about Tom Hanks. It is absolutely incredible. Well, nice guy Tom Hanks is playing Mr. Rogers in the upcoming movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and we're used to seeing him in that type of role, the good guy, like Forrest Gump, Castaway. But have you ever wondered why he never plays the villain? I think Tom Hanks is the last major, like, Jimmy Stewart kind of actor, and uh, he's brilliant. You want to go see whatever movie this man does. Have you ever met for him? For sure. And, uh, I've got an interesting story about that. I worked for Steven Spielberg for a short time, and he used to call me the fake Tom Hanks because he said <laughs> Tom and I have the same voice. Voice, which oh, I don't think we do. Really? But that's, he used to call me the fake Tom Hanks. So one day, Tom was doing a Broadway show, and <laughs> I sent it, him an so. email, or a, a tech, or no, a uh, FedEx backstage, because I wanted to meet him, but he never responded, so I've never had a chance oh, to meet him. Someday. A FedEx? Oh, he yeah. can be a bad That's guy. how you get people to respond. A FedEx? So I sent him a FedEx backstage, hoping he was going to respond, so I'd go back, but uh, but he never responded. I had no so. idea that was the secret, that is sending him a FedEx. It's yes. a Hollywood trick. But yeah. you, in the FedEx, is like a note? A note that says, Mr. Spielberg uh, refers to me as a fake Tom Hanks, and you know, you and I work you. for him, and I'd love to meet you. And here's what I, you know, Google me if you don't know who I am. And I'm all gonna, that stuff. I'm gonna try that one day. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's worked most times. It's Not that time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that how we go, it's a Hollywood trick. I still don't understand, <laughs> how do you get a FedEx backstage? They call me the fake Will Smith, so I wonder if I uh, send Will Smith a FedEx, will he like hang out with me, maybe? Send one to the Red Table Talk. Ooh, yeah. And then have him deliver that to Will. I think that gets you on a list if you do that. Like a crazy list? Yeah. Crazy, no. yeah. <laughs> That's right, you're in Denver. Don't worry about that list. All right. <laughs> I just want right, to meet Will. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, we get to the bottom of why it took more than 20 years for Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston to actually work together again. You guys don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to DBL. We're taking a look back at some of the biggest stars who have ever been on the show. So why not start at the top of the A-list with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Erica got to the bottom of why it took so long for them to work together again. We both played sisters on Friends almost 20 years ago. What took so long to work together again? Waiting for the right thing to come also, along. I don't know if you noticed, they didn't make a whole lot of movies with two girls. Yes, that's so <laughs> true. Two women in them. So it took time for, for women to get to a place where we got to produce our own material with mm -hmm. a lot of frequency and the budgets we need to bring a story like this to life. Yeah. This just wouldn't have been possible seven years ago. 
And you're a big fan of the morning show. Oh, my Lanta. If y'all aren't watching the morning show, you have to start watching it. It is amazing. I think it's just it's a new day because we watched the whole Today Show scandal break in real time. Yeah. So you almost come into it feeling like you know a part of the story and then it just expands. It's amazing. And are we going to get like an inside view? Like, do, do you have that being a yes. host on the show? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, You'll feel like list. you're very inside. All right. All right. Well, by far, the <laughs> <laughs> giving inside views uh, to one of my other favorite shows, by far the cutest star we've ever had on the show was little Faith Herman from Watchmen and This Is Us. And I got a chance to ask her about her favorite co-stars. It's so adorable. Watch. Welcome to DBL, young queen. Hi. Hi. Well, I am a huge fan of This Is Us, so I'm so excited to talk with you today. Annie, my favorite child, is there anything that you'd like to do today? I'm good with whatever. Bless your soul. Now, you know your show is a huge success. Do you ever get recognized? Yes, I do. It always catches me off guard when I get <laughs> recognized, and it's always so nice getting to meet people that are fans of the show. Well, we know that you can't reveal any spoilers, although I would love to ask you for some, but how do you keep all of those secrets, and does your family ever try to get anything out of you? It's not actually hard keeping secrets anymore. Like at first it was, but now it's not. And like usually my family don't ask me for any spoilers because they like to be surprised and like watch the show like everyone else. Well, I'm going to name a few of your This Is Us co-stars. So we're going to play a little game. Tell me the first word that comes to mind when I name each one of them, okay? Okay. Okay, your on-screen dad, Sterling K. Brown. Funny and silly. I could see that. Now, how about Mandy Moore, who plays your grandma on the show? Very kind. And what about your on-screen uncle, Justin Hartley? He's funny, too. He always <laughs> has like, funny jokes with Mr. Sterling, too. That's awesome. Now, you looked so stylish. You were giving all your black girl magic on the red carpet at the Emmys, girl, rocking that yellow dress. Now, what's it like getting all glammed up for the award shows? Well, I always have such a fun time, and it's always so exciting getting ready and picking out my dress. Well, soak it all in, girl. Stay present. Now, you said before that you'd love to work with Zendaya one day. I am a big believer in the power of manifestation, so let's put this out into the world, shall we? Yes. Okay, if she were watching the show right now, what would you say to her? I would say, hello, Zendaya. Um, you're such inspiration. I love you so much. If you ever need a little sister, like a cousin or anything, um, you can call me. Well, I thank you so much for your time. You are such an inspiration, a symbol of black girl magic, and I am rooting for you all the way. I look forward to continuing to watch you on This Is Us. Thank you so much. I had such a fun time. Wow. I want to put her in my pocket, but I'm getting arrested. <laughs> She's so grown. So cute. She's got an old so soul. So cute. Wow. Yeah, she does. Hey, she how does. is Mandy Moore her grandmother? Because they do an age like progression, so okay. they talk about like in terms of so they show her past, present, future. Okay. So yeah. All right. got to check the show out. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mass Singer is a show that delights and baffles, and we had the pleasure of speaking with one of the hosts, Kim Jong, and here's what he told DBL co-host Tori Shulman. Just watch. I want to ask, you're a judge on Masked Singer. What is it about this epically weird show, we talk about it every week, that connects with audiences so much? It's the number one show in Korea, and I'm of Korean descent, and my mom sent me like video links of the show, and she said, she said, and I quote, you know, this show will be a hit, and this will be good for your career. Whoa. And she actually said that. I'm not even kidding, so basically, I did the show, you know, to please my mom. <laughs> and so it, it really did. I was like, all right, just get off my back. I'll do the show, you know? You were a terrible, notoriously terrible guesser. You once mistook your own former co-star Margaret Cho for Melissa Rivers. <laughs> I think I think maybe like like that Joan like Melissa Rivers, maybe. Has it gotten <laughs> any easier for you? No, I've gotten dumber. Okay. And I'll tell you it. why. Okay. I think I'm like the Homer Simpson of the show in terms of guesses. Um, now, yeah. in honor of yeah. first I mean, when, when you think when you think the poodle is Dog the Bounty Hunter, that that proved that pretty much, that you which was a real guess of mine last yeah, year. Yeah, that was a hard, hard yeah. no on that yeah. one. Yeah. That guy seems <laughs> super down to earth. Oh yeah. 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 I like uh, <laughs> that his mom 
just thought he was going to be a big hit. Well, yeah, the, the, he took his mom's, mom's advice, and she was right. You always got to always the mom knows best. Yes. How about Sister Girl? Any good advice she gives you? We call Brandon's mom Sister Girl. Yeah, just, just so, so everyone you know. knows. Uh, be nice to Erica. <laughs> Best advice she's ever given. Her advice to me was keep railing on Brandon. <laughs> Mama knows best. She definitely does. Coming up on DVL, when it comes to live TV, there are going to be some mistakes. Our best bloopers are coming up next. Welcome back to DBL. Well, we are all very professional and buttoned up here. Absolutely. But every once in a blue moon, we mess up, okay? That's it. Once in a blue moon, especially Brandon. Let's take a look back <laughs> at our really. best bloopers. <laughs> I think I. <laughs> I think Beyonce is just okay. <laughs> <laughs> Erica's left the show. Faye Dunaway has been fired from a play in New York. The 78-year-old Brandon, you're all in my shop, buddy. <laughs> Not worried with the greasy it. fingers. <laughs> 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 She's 63, and go Kathy. She says she's a panther. Go on. I want it that way. Yes. My blackness won't high five. <laughs> Week's most dramatic. Week's most That's how you get into the weekend. Congrats, we'll be Chelsea. back tomorrow. No, we won't. We'll be back Monday. We'll see you <laughs> I think we got off easy there. Yeah, yeah, I think we're just having fun. Yeah, that's right. We're like, live, we're in live TV. Yeah, if you want that all buttoned up thing, go somewhere else. Yeah, because this us. is DBL. Yeah, that's and right. And we're gonna mess up. And it's not like we're doing a promo right now. <laughs> we're gonna mess up and we're gonna own it and you're gonna laugh with us. And we tell the truth because we got ten more seconds to waste. That's right. So hang tight. That's right. Yeah. Get bout it. We're the bout it TV show. Five more? I'm, I'm going Four. Four. Yeah, we, we, we made it. We made it. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, welcome back to DBL. Well, we saved the best for last, and it's got to be oh this moment. Gosh. He's already reading the prompter when Brandon <laughs> digs himself into a big hole discussing what? His dating life, of course. Let's really? watch. Really? Me being the for, me being bachelor, you know, the single one in in the in the group. You, you I've had my fun. Wait a second, I thought you were in a relationship. I've, I'm not in a relationship. I'm dating someone, yes, but I've I've, I've had my fun in life. Oh, you just said don't you were give single. me in trouble, bro. Don't, don't give me in trouble right now. I'm Listen, still what, single. Did he just say he was You're single? You're single until you make it official. I'm not official yet. Wait, you're not wearing your Letterman jacket. What does that mean? What do you mean? What is this grease? Come on, Erica. You gotta oh, be on my side. Oh, now you wanna bring you me gotta into you on my side for once. <laughs> Honestly, I can't give you an answer from my like perspective because I'm a serial monogamous. So when I'm with someone, I'm with someone. I eat cereal too. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm just saying, like when you've when you've lived back. some sort of life and now you're feeling someone. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind. You said when you've lived some sort of life implying exactly what, Brandon? He you don't want done what he been doing. That's not exactly. true. That's not true. <laughs> That's not, Erica, you, you said exactly. that. Pull, pull the knife out my back, please. You said I've it. I've had open conversations with you about I have been nothing but truthful in any sort of situationship or prior relationships Sit, and stuff Yeah. put, put, <laughs> put there. I've been 100% uh, truthful. But now I'm eating your cereal of monogamy and all that good stuff. So now you you, you want to be with one person, but then you're like, you want to go out to eat again? Oh, man. Yeah, I get it. Hey, producers, y'all like this? <laughs> Is this good TV? He was so far in that holy made up situation. <laughs> I've been saying situation. I'm not, as a matter of fact, I'm going to coin that because it's. You can't coin it. It's been done a long time ago. Well, it hasn't been coined. It. Someone said right. it. But a situationship, <laughs> let me explain to y'all the Brandon London way, is like, you know, I bounced around from living in Canada to LA to New York, and you're feeling someone, but at the same time, you understand this may not be the one. I think that now I have found the one. So okay. now it's official. That's, now yeah. you can say you're dating now it's official. and in a relationship. And in a relationship. The situation ship is behind you. I'm having my player card burial ceremony tonight, and Erica, I would like you to be there. Wow. Can I go? No, no, because you put me on blast. I'll just light a candle for you. We'll see you guys <laughs> next time.